Hey Dan, I've got a three-parter for you about aligning faith with data of the Bible. All right, let's see it. And also the fit today is one of the goats when it comes to the X-Men. First, what are the best ways to understand the phrase, the fear of God, as it's variously used? Hey, thank you for a great question. Uh, the Hebrew word at the root of this phrase, the fear of God, is pretty straightforward, refers to terror, dread, fear. And I think that's the conceptual root of this. Uh, anciently, the idea was that you recognized, you acknowledged how dangerous deities were. And so your piety was a reflection of how much you feared that deity and what they were capable of, what they could do to you if you violated an oath if you did not offer appropriate worship, that kind of stuff. And I think as the concept of a loving deity becomes more salient in later periods, that probably softens and gives way to a renegotiation of this concept as more about awe and reverence. Uh, but that notion of fear, I don't think ever really goes away. And there are historians of religion who think of piety as fundamentally based on fear. And you've got like Rudolf Otto's notion of the tremendum and the fascinance coming together to represent the numinous. But that I would suggest is a pretty outdated framework. But fundamentally, yeah, the idea is terror. And then in later periods, this is kind of massaged into awe or reverence. Second, I've read a couple of deeply moving tw Twitter threads from Rabbi Ari Lam. I'm not sure if I'm saying that name correctly. Uh, and I'm curious how well they line up with the scholarly consensus. Um, I'm paraphrasing perhaps too reductively, but one explains how the story of the Tower of Babel highlights the evils of empire. Uh, and the other teaches that the story of Cain and Abel shows us God lamenting the interdependence that we have on God and that God has on us. And I'm, again, wondering what your thoughts are on that. I remember those Twitter threads, uh, and I remember thinking that they were quite moving in the way they made these stories sound very topical and very timely for us today. But they did strike me as a modern renegotiation with what was going on anciently. And I do recall some friends and colleagues who chimed in to say that this sounded kind of like a modern reinterpretation of what was going on, more so than what would have been meaningful or useful to the original authors and audiences who were writing uh, probably around the 7th century BCE is when we get some of the origins of the stories from the primeval history. And so the Tower of Babel is probably uh, using this unfinished tower uh, ziggurat of Etem and Anki that had been built much earlier in the early 7th century BCE. The Babylonians destroyed it. It took the Assyrians something like 88 years before they were able to reconstruct it. And so during the period of the composition of these stories, we have this unfinished ziggurat that was a symbol for uh, the Israelite people of the corruption and probably the incompetence of the Assyrian people. A great book on what's going on in these stories in the primeval history is David Carr's book, The Formation of Genesis 1 through 11, which talks about the precursors for the narratives that we find in Genesis 1 through 11, the primeval history. So I would highly recommend that for something that's going to come a little closer to the academic consensus regarding what these stories were originally about. Finally, do you recommend any resources for those of us who've done deconstructive work on our faiths, regardless of our tradition or background or what we currently believe, and want to thoughtfully reconstruct with data prioritized over dogma. So I think those in the deconstruction community may have better recommendations than me, but someone who I think has been working in that area for quite some time now is Pete Enns uh, with uh, The Bible for Normal People. And he has a number of books that I think would fit into what uh, you're looking for, and particularly his most recent one, Curveball, which is uh, the subtitle is something like what to do when your faith takes turns you didn't see coming or something like that, which I think is, is primarily about how to maintain and constructively approach faith. Uh, when you learn these things about the Bible. And he's got other books, uh, The Bible Tells Me So, The Sin of Certainty, and then one that I think is entitled How the Bible Actually Works that I think would overlap with what you're looking for as well. Uh, and just wanted to quickly say thanks uh, for the work that you were doing. Uh, big fan. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that very much.